So there's this misconception that cheap phones can't also be good phones. And well, maybe at one point that was true, but these days you can get a pretty great phone at basically any price point. We talk a lot on this channel about flagship phones that cost all the way up to $1,000, $1,200, $1,400. And the truth is, unless you have some very particular needs, you can probably get by with a phone that costs much, much less. Take the Moto G Power, for example. It doesn't have a fancy glass and metal design or the latest and greatest processor, but for only $250, you're getting a pretty great experience anyway. This is Motorola's eighth iteration of its Moto G line with a sturdy plastic body that, despite a few scuffs and scratches, has actually held up pretty well and feels really solid to hold. You get a headphone jack, which is something you won't find on even most flagships that cost four to five times as much, and there's a rear fingerprint sensor hidden in the Moto logo. It's a lot faster than an in-display fingerprint sensor would have been at this price point, and you can use it to pull down your notification shade with a swipe, which is so handy. Motorola's been pretty great at software lately, too. The Moto G Power runs on a pretty lightweight build of Android 10 out of the box, with a few useful tweaks like Moto Actions, which lets you launch your camera by twisting the phone in your hand, or toggle the flashlight with a double chop. Oh, and the Moto G Power gets its name from the gigantic 5,000 mAh battery inside, which can keep the phone running for two to three days on a single charge. It's really nuts, and it's easily the best reason to pick up this phone. But of course, you're gonna have to make some compromises to reach this price point, so what are they? Well, for starters, Motorola doesn't typically put NFC chips in its more affordable phones, and the Moto G Power is no exception. That means no contactless payments, which is a pretty big bummer for some people, especially these days when you don't necessarily wanna be handling cash back and forth. It's also pretty slow to charge that giant battery, and the cameras are, well, they're fine for a $250 phone, but they're nothing special. Now, if that's not quite your thing, for around the same price, you can pick up the TCL 10L instead. It's got a much more eye-catching finish, but the general hardware is about the same, with a rear fingerprint sensor and a headphone jack, but the 10L has a slightly larger display and a slimmer, though still huge, 4,000 mAh battery. There's also a customizable button on the side of the phone that you can set to launch various apps and shortcuts with a single, long, or double press. You can even set it to do the same things as Moto Actions on the Moto G Power, or maybe even launch Google Pay since the 10L does support NFC. One of the 10L's biggest features is its NXT Vision display tech, which TCL uses in its TVs. You can toggle this in the software, it converts SDR content to HDR in real time, and automatically handles settings like contrast and saturation to make your screen pop at all the right times. So the TCL 10L has a pretty great software experience too, but it isn't the fastest performer, and that's a little strange because it has the same Snapdragon 665 processor as the Moto G Power, which runs just fine. But the 10L lags a lot more often, and the cameras are, well, they're not great, regardless of the price. But if you don't need a great camera, the 10L is a great option that really excels in its display tech and customizable smart key. Now, if the cameras are a priority and you've got a little bit of extra cash to spend, the Galaxy A51 from Samsung is also a great option to consider. The A51 looks a bit more modern than the other options, almost like a watered-down Galaxy S20. It comes in a few flashy finishes, and you get an in-display fingerprint sensor here instead of a capacitive one on the back. There's also a 6.5-inch AMOLED display up front with tight bezels and a small hole-punch camera cutout. The body is still made out of plastic, but it's surprisingly lightweight for its size, and just like on the TCL 10L, you get NFC here for mobile payments, along with a 4,000 mAh battery. The A51 also has some of the best cameras in its price point, with a 48 megapixel main sensor, along with a 12 megapixel ultra-wide, a 5 megapixel macro, and a dedicated portrait camera. This phone isn't gonna knock the pixel off of the camera throne by any means, but it's a surprisingly robust camera setup for such a low-cost phone. But if you do wanna take pixel-quality photos with your phone, well, why not get a Pixel? The 3a isn't officially being sold by Google anymore, but it's pretty easy to find elsewhere at a discount, and still takes some of the best photos not just within its own price range, but really of any phone. And of course, you'll be the first in line for new versions of Android as well. 
And if you're wondering why Google's discontinued the 3A, it's because they're gearing up to finally launch the Pixel 4A, at least if the rumors are true. We've got a full video going over everything we currently know about Google's 2020 Pixel lineup, so be sure to give that a watch after you're done with this video right here. Some other affordable phones worth mentioning include the Nokia 7.2, which has an absolutely stunning design with a frosted matte glass backing and a pretty great screen and software experience. There's also the Moto G Fast, which offers a pretty similar experience to the Moto G Power with a few features removed to cut back even further on the price. We've got a whole article on the best cheap Android phones with plenty of other options to choose from. Now I'd love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments down below if you use any of the phones I've mentioned and tell me how well they've been holding up for you so far. Of course, stick around in the coming weeks for some Pixel 4a coverage, which is hopefully coming sooner than later. We're gonna have plenty of videos on that. Subscribe to Android Central so you don't miss when those videos go live. And until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.